Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to dress for a job interview. Now, this is a very broad topic because there's a lot of different types of jobs out there. So how you dress really depends on the type of job it is, your degree of professionalism, your degree of experience, as well as some pragmatic financial concerns, because some of the, some of the, uh, some of the more expensive suits and things like this may not be easily available, especially for people who are just starting out in their career, um, people coming out of undergrad or out of high school, things like this, as well as people who have other financial commitments. A suit may or may not be affordable, but that may be what you're expected to wear for a job interview. So we'll talk more about suits toward the end of this video. So right now, I am dressed in my rough approximation of how a student in undergrad or even high school dresses. Uh, just ignore the fact that I'm mid thirties at time of filming and not 18 to 22, but I've got my lovely novelty t-shirt that my sister got me from Dinosaur Land in Winchester, Virginia. I've got my university uh, hoodie, the only, the only piece of sweat clothing that, that I own at this stage in my life. So this is casual clothing. Uh, you're all very smart people, obviously. Uh, you've, you've decided to watch this channel, which is already a brilliant move on your part. So metal for you, but you know, because, uh, because you're smart people, that this is not how you want to dress for a job interview. This is way too informal for a job interview. And what it suggests, if you show up in casual clothing, things like t-shirts, I would put flannels in this uh, category, uh, lounge pants, sweat pants, any, any, any sweat thing. Don't, don't wear a sweat uh, jacket, don't wear a, a sweatshirt, whatever it is. Um, stuff with lots of pictures on it, whatever it is. You, you have a sense, I think, of what casual clothing is like. It's the clothes that you wear out, that you wear when you want to be comfortable. When you're hanging out around your house or your apartment or wherever your dorm room, wherever it is you live, uh, when you're just sort of chilling with friends, whatever it is. That's great. They're, they're comfortable. They're great. I wear casual clothes in my day-to-day -day life as well, but you don't wear them for an interview. So what do you wear? Well, the basic rule of thumb, as we're going to see throughout the next couple of phases of this video, is you dress as an interviewee. So this is advice that I once got, um, and I think it's, I think it's spot on. Because often people say dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. Well, this doesn't apply for interviews, because for interviews, you want to dress as an interviewee for the job that you want. And a good rule of thumb for that, a good generalization for that, is dress one degree of formality above what you would dress as for that job. So if this is, say, a white collar office job, and you would normally be wearing business casual, maybe a button-down shirt and tie, khakis. You'll see this in the second part of the video. You would want to dress one step up. So you would want to wear a suit for the interview. Um, maybe at a push, blazers and khakis or blazers and business trousers, uh, odd, odd trousers. But you want to be at least one step so again, this is very comfortable. This is very informal. This is not what you would wear to the office. This is not, there are some jobs you might dress casually for, but you don't want to do that for the interview. You want to dress in the, at the very least in business casual, if not in proper formal business clothing. So let's take a look at the next sort of sartorial step up with business casual. 
Well, through the magic of digital editing, I'm now dressed in business casual clothing. So, like casual clothing, business casual is a little bit hard to define because the broad range of things that fall into the category of business casual. But basically, business casual is the kind of clothes that you would likely wear to the office if you're doing white collar work or office work, things like this. Um, so this can range from the less formal end, things like polo shirts, maybe dark jeans, although there's disagreement about whether or not any kind of jeans ever count as business casual. Um, but something like a polo shirt and khakis would certainly be at the less formal end of business casual, all the way up to, say, a blazer with a shirt and tie and khakis, um, which would be on the more formal end of business casual and basically everything in between. So something like a button-down shirt in uh, Oxford cloth, an Oxford cloth button-down shirt, something like that, uh, a, shirt, a solid colored shirt, usually a lighter colored shirt, like a blue or a white or a light yellow, something like that. Um, something with stripes, like what I'm wearing right now, something with a tattersall pattern, which is a very small check pattern, um, a kind of small grid type pattern. Whether or not flannels count as business casual, I think is a matter of opinion. For me, I would generally say a flannel is not business casual. I would put that into the proper cat, the proper casual category, but there may be disagreement about that. Um, something like a tie is, is definitely part of business casual potentially. Um, something like what I'm wearing right now, this is a knit tie, uh, which is more informal, but um, don't wear a novelty tie to the office, if I'm honest. Just, just don't do it. But something like stripes, something like uh, small medallion shapes or something like this, solid colored ties obviously work. Um, but these sort of professional ties, these are a good component that up your business casual game. Um, again, this is a th this is the kind of thing you would wear day to day to the office uh, for white collar work, something like this. Similarly, for women, there's a big range of business casual. Um, again, polos can work, um, but like a sweater, a nice sweater uh, can can be business casual nice blouse, a professional blouse, even something very sort of patterned, like a floral pattern or something like this, can still fall within this broad category of business casual, um, up through, again, as with, with men on the, the sort of upper tier, something like a blazer or a tweed jacket, something like this, with a button-down shirt um, and, and odd trousers or, or a skirt, uh, skirts definitely work as well with, with business casual. Um, and in terms of neckwear for women, uh, there are ties do work if that's the aesthetic you want to go for. Another very common thing is a nice scarf. Um, for men, scarves are a bit less business casual in terms of day-to-day -day wear. But um, obviously in terms of like during the winter when you're coming into the office, if it's cold, something like this, a scarf is a very, a very good, very stylish accessory. Um, but for women like silk scarves or, or very sort of long flowing scarves can look very, very chic. Um, business casual, because it's such a broad range, it's hard to talk really about the relationship of business casual to interviews. But if we follow the rule laid down, or the guideline, I should say, if we follow the guideline laid down in the first part of this video, where you dress at least one step up from the job that you actually uh, are applying for for an interview, you could you would be looking at at.
business casual as an appropriate means of dressing for things like a lot of service industry jobs and a lot of blue collar work. Um, so if you were applying for say a job as a server at a restaurant or um, I, I once worked as a cashier at Food Lion grocery store uh, and I, when I went for my interview, I, I think I was a little fancier and my business casual than, than they were used to. I wore a blazer, a shirt and tie and, and khakis and sneakers, which sneakers are not particularly business casual. I didn't really talk about footwear, but, um, typically sort of decent leather shoes. Um, they don't necessarily need to be like fancy. They don't need to be patent leather or something like this, but something that's uh, pretty plain black is okay. Brown is probably better. Um, but for business casual, there is some flexibility and in certain industries, sneakers are going to, to be the norm. So that's something to, to be aware of as well is different, uh, companies, different industries have different standards, but in terms of job interviews, business casual is going to be fine for blue collar jobs. So, uh, anything in the trades, typically business casual is going to, going to be right where you want to look, um, service industry work, things like this. Um, so these are, again, these are professions where you would dress day to day at the sort of lower end of business casual, maybe even casual, depending on what it is that you're actually doing. So you're again, following that guideline of one step up from how you would dress day to day on the job. Now, for those of you who are going to be applying for white collar jobs, office jobs, um, academic jobs, things like this, you have to go one step further up. So let's take a look at that. So now I'm into business professional wear. So, uh, this is probably what most people would be wearing for say a white collar job interview or a uh, professional job interview. You want to wear typically a suit. Now a, a suit, and this is the same for men or women, uh, male presenting people, female presenting people, a suit by definition is a two to three piece garment, either jacket and trousers or jacket vest and trousers made of the same material and in a comparable cut. Often, uh, you want a specifically business suit, which is the kind of thing that I'm wearing here. You can't see my trousers, uh, but I am wearing them. Don't worry. That would be creepy if I wasn't. Um, but this is the kind of thing you typically want for a job interview, especially for say the kind of office job where business casual is going to be the expected day to day wear. So again, we talked about business casual in the previous portion of this video. You want to take a step up from that for the interview. If your day to day uh, office wear is going to be, say, a, a button down shirt and a tie or a blazer with a with uh, odd trousers, a nice blouse or a nice sweater, something like this, you want to step it up to a suit. Um, in terms of suit choices, there are a lot of different options. If you are just starting out and you don't have a suit, gray, either dark gray or charcoal gray or navy blue are going to be your number one options. That, that would be the first suit type that you want to invest in. I mean, this is a gray suit. This is a suit that I would wear to a job interview. Um, I would say avoid black suits, although some people do like them. The risk with black suits, especially with a white shirt, 
is that you kind of look like you're going to a funeral, which is not necessarily the impression you want to give in a job interview. Um, so I would say a gray suit or, or a navy blue suit are your best options. If you want a little more panache, pinstripes is an option. And you can do a black pinstripe suit, but I would do a navy blue pinstripe suit more. Something like a window pane check is a little more daring, but I would maybe steer clear of that for a job interview, unless, again, you really want to sort of show your personality. In terms of the shirt, uh, a, a solid colored shirt is going to be your best bet. I would say cream or like a, a, an off-white. You can go with a white shirt. I, I don't think they look as good, if I'm honest, but that's maybe personal preference. Um, and then a necktie or a bow tie. I like bow ties. Uh, if you're a bow tie person, if you're one of my people, uh, bow ties are, again, a good way to show a little bit of quirkiness, a little bit of individual personality. Um, don't buy a pre-tied bow tie. They can look very tacky. So I would definitely say tie your own bow tie. If you're going with a regular necktie, that's great as well. That's, that's very, very standard. Uh, that's not going to bother anybody. In terms of neckwear, also, uh, if you're a woman or female presenting person, a nice scarf, like a very like fine silk scarf or something like that is potentially okay. It's a little more informal, so I would be very careful about it, um, but it, it definitely can work. Um, in terms of your, your neckwear, if you're going for a tie or a bow tie, solid colors are pretty good. You want to go typically in a, a different color than your suit, a, a color that works well with the suit that, you're, that you've gone for. Um, like if, if you're in say a light gray suit, you don't necessarily want a bright orange tie, for instance. Um, but there are a lot, there's a lot of videos out there. Um, I, I would direct you to, for instance, the Gentleman's Gazette channel, because they have a lot of, of videos about pairing and matching different colors. Um, but a solid colored tie is a pretty good choice. Stripes are a pretty good choice, as long as they're not super, super loud, or a geometric pattern, whether that's like medallions, whether that's paisley, something like this. Um, again, as long as it's not super ostentatious. I would also suggest silk. Now, if you are sort of early career person or something like this, you don't, you, you've just gotten out of university or something like this, you don't have a lot of money for suits, something like this, you do have some options. One is thrift stores. Uh, thrift stores are good. They, they have very affordable suits often. The problem you run into may be how formal are these suits? Um, the other problem may be you find a suit jacket without the trousers, for instance. You also don't get much choice in terms of um, sizing. So if, especially if you're a bigger person, like myself, um, one of the big challenges I have with thrift stores is they very often have only a few things in my size and they're not necessarily full suits. So that's a problem. But there are places you can go to get affordable, decent suits because you want to make sure you're getting something decent. So I would say avoid anything fast fashion-y. I would say avoid, like on eBay and stuff, there's a lot of suits that you can get that ship from China or South Korea. I would be very, very cautious about those. Not because China and South Korea don't make good stuff, because they very often do, but one Asian sizing is different than US sizing. So if you're in the US, and I'm just sort of casually assuming that uh, my viewers are in the US, which I know is a bad assumption because it is the World Wide Web, but uh, if you're in the US, if you're in Europe, Asian sizing is different. So that's something you have to convert for. Um, but a lot of fast fashion suits 
are not just not very good quality. And interviewers will be able to frequently will be able to spot a low quality suit. So uh, there are other places you can go to. Department stores frequently have their own suit brands or brands that they particularly sell. Uh, this one, for instance, this is Stafford, which I think is sold through JCPenney. Um, Stafford is a good, affordable suit brand. They're not the best suits out there, and obviously these aren't custom made, they aren't custom tailored, but they are good quality early career suits until you can afford to pay $500 to $1,000 for suits, paying $150 to $200 for a suit of a sport coat, of a, of a, a suit coat and a jacket. That's about what you're reasonably looking to invest. Um, the other thing that's crucial to know with suits is that suits are not sized the same way that most clothing is. Uh, so most clothing, particularly in the US, is sized in something like large or extra large, medium, small, 2XL, whatever it is. Shirts, this shirt for instance, while dress shirts very often are sized by the size of the collar and the sleeve length, this shirt is a 2XL. That's the way that, that most shirts in the US are measured, the way that most coats or jackets are measured, the way that whatever it is. That's not the way that suits are measured. Suit trousers are measured roughly the same way that, say, jeans are measured. So your the waist measurement you would use for jeans may be the same as the waist measurement you would use for suit trousers though suit trousers often run a little bit smaller, so that's something worth knowing. But suit jackets, you need to know your suit jacket size. So if you wear normally, for instance, a large, you may be looking for a size 40 jacket, for instance. Uh, so I wear a 2XL shirt. I wear typically a size 52 suit jacket. That's something you need to know if you're going to buy a suit. How do you figure this out? Well, you can take your own measurements, but that's sometimes tricky. The better thing to do is if you can, if you have a local menswear shop, or sometimes department stores will still have an in-residence tailor, go to somebody who does this for a living and have them get your measurements. One, uh, one caution I will put here is often the Often tailors in menswear stores or uh, the, the, the resident tailor in a suit section for a department store, they may or may not be familiar with measuring women or female presenting individuals. Uh, my partner and I had that issue once uh, when she was looking for a suit for a job interview. We went to a tailor at a menswear shop he measured her the way he thought she should be measured and the custom suit that she had ordered, the measurements were not right. So we had those issues. So you do want to try and try and get your measurements as accurately as you can to figure out the right size suit for you. Now, one last thing uh, in terms of suits and in terms of this general rule of bump your formality up one level, what if you're in a job or applying to a job rather where you're going to be expected to wear a suit day to day? Well, there's some things you can do to accessorize your suit to make it a little more striking. So I've now made two very comparatively small but visual changes that's made this suit a little more formal, a little more fancy. One is the addition of a vest or a waistcoat, a waistcoat, if you're in Britain. Um, so the vest in the, U in the US, we call it a vest. In the, the UK, in the Commonwealth, they call it a waistcoat. Um, the addition of a vest can be a good way to slightly increase the formality of a suit. Again, it needs to be 
the same fabric, same cut, etc., etc. But one of the things that it does is it breaks up the image of your torso. It gives you an additional thing that's going on here. And again, especially for someone like me, who's a larger individual, having stuff to break up this general field can be a good way of, sort of visually undercutting the size of, of the whole stomach abdomen region. The other thing that I've done here is add a pocket square. A pocket square is a small handkerchief that goes in the top pocket, the breast pocket of a suit jacket. This is a formal thing, something you can you can do that's very, very simple um, and can add a visual dynamic element to your suit. I would say try and find a pocket square that is similar to, but not necessarily matching the neckwear that you've chosen. So in this case, my bow tie is uh, dark blue with white and gold stripes or silver and gold stripes. And I've got a blue paisley pocket square with gold, brown, and red designs. So they play off one another because they're visually similar, but they're not, they don't look matched necessarily. So that can be a really good thing. Another thing that you can do if you invest in uh, a nicer dress shirt, you may get, so I'm, I've got what are called barrel cuffs. This is what most shirts have nowadays where they close with a button like this, but there are uh, shirts, especially nicer dress shirts that have, that still take cufflinks. If you get a nicer dress shirt that has cufflinks, that's another thing you can do that just sort of bumps you up a little bit in terms of the fanciness of it. So if you were applying for a job where you were going to be expected to wear a suit day to day, something like uh, if you were a, a, if you were applying for a job in a law firm or accounting firm, maybe um, if you were in sort of upper echelons, CEO of a corporation or, or something like this, VP, whatever it is, adding a vest, adding a pocket square, adding these sort of subtle accents can be a way of making you stand out from the crowd by slightly improving the formality of your suit for the interview and showing visually that you're just dedicated to going for this job. So those are the things that you want to keep in mind when you are trying to dress for an interview. You want to think about how you present yourself visually as an interviewee. What do you do to make it clear that this is that you are interested, dedicated, and that you are the right kind of motivated go-getter that they would want to hire.